Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to our Flow and Grow Fireside Chats. I'm Hannah. And I am Michelle. And you're here with us by the fire. <laughs> and we are very happy to have you here with us. We're doing a video series for our YouTube channels, just sitting down to chat with you and actually talk about all these things that you and I talk about mm -hmm. nonstop but stuff that we actually want to bring to the community, to the world. There's so much to cover. And to Unscripted, raw, yeah. just us hanging out, having a conversation with you. Yeah. Okay, so we want to talk about cultivating self-care. You can bring that into your hoop practice and begin practices like using mantras and affirmations and meditations on their own and then recognizing that you can combine that with hooping. And for me, hooping has become a moving meditation, especially when paired with nature mm. and yeah. Mother Earth. That's such <laughs> a my big biggest part. inspiration. Yeah. I'm it so is. interested in that because I hula hoop in a gym and I live in a city and I really don't get out in nature much. Mm -hmm. And um, I went for a hike the other day and I was honestly like, this is, I get it. I get what Michelle is talking about. <laughs> I was in the woods and it was beautiful. I was at Mammoth Cave National Park, oh. just hiking around. Yeah. But I'm so interested in how you have combined these two passions of yours and really mm -hmm. brought them into, into your business mm -hmm. and into your mission. Isn't it amazing when you have that first like connection to the earth? Mm -hmm. You can literally feel the vibrations that are being put off from the world around you, yeah. you know? When you're away from the busyness of the world, when you are immense into our natural habitat, being out in nature is our natural habitat. As humans, that's where we started. It's so easy to lose your connection with it. And when you are out in nature, it's so easy to unfog your mind. Yeah, it and is. to find more clarity. Yeah, it is. And to be more present because you don't have to work as much yeah. at being present and sit and meditate and think, okay, I'm gonna be present because nature is constantly evolving and changing around you. And you have to be very aware of your environment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In the middle of my hoop journey, I was out hiking by myself one day, brought my hoops with me because I never go anywhere without my hoops. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Words everywhere. Wise, bring, you always bring a hoop. Mm -hmm. Always. I yeah. tried to bring my hoop into a museum once and my husband told me he wouldn't be seen with me if I did that. So oh. <laughs> maybe not in a museum. I feel like you could ask them though and be like, could I film a little thing in here? Yeah. And they would be like, yeah, don't hit any of the artwork. Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't ruin this Picasso, but like, sure. Yeah. Like, right? I feel okay. like they might let you. Yeah, maybe next time I'll, I'll ask them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, there's an idea for okay. another video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I want to hear, uh, tell me about how you found your, your hula hoop flow in connection to nature. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Okay, so first when I was drawn to nature, um, it, it awakened something in me that I didn't know was there. It was peace. It was quietness. It was calmness. And as somebody who has a long history of anxiety and depression and never being able to quiet my mind, my first experiences being submerged in nature with solitude was quietness. Everything just stopped. My thoughts stopped. I had forgotten about what I have to do tomorrow. And when I uh, brought my hoops out with me, I, I developed the strong desire to bring those sensations into my flow. Because within my flow, for the longest time, I got really caught up with being tricky and I'd get frustrated over and over trying to master these certain tricks, these certain combos. I would get caught up in the pursuit of mm -hmm. what I thought was the flow state. Right, yeah. I experienced my true flow state out submerged in nature. And I could be completely free in nature. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Okay. That's really beautiful. Sure that made sense. I'm wondering because so many people ask in the hoop world, like, how do you get to a flow state? How do you flow? 
And for me, that answer has always been, well, it, it's directly tied to muscle memory. I kind of come at it from a, a circus That's training. That's a big part of it. Yeah, circus yeah. training fitness perspective where like flow is when you are doing something very difficult in the moment and you're making it look easy to an audience. But mm -hmm. I've never thought about um, seeking an environment of flow mm -hmm. in order to find a flow state with a hula hoop. Absolutely. Yeah, and I yeah. love that you do that. And nature has become my biggest inspiration in my flow. My flow will change with the environment and the weather, and there's so many um, things that can con contribute to your, your form of flow. They mm -hmm. don't always have to be the same. Mm -hmm. But for me, I always feel like I enjoy my flow the most when I'm out in nature because that is when I feel my most authentic self and the most free. I feel very, um, if I had to sum it up into one word, being out in nature makes me feel liberated and then I can extend that into my hooping. Yeah. I make it a priority in my life to get outside, connect with nature, bring my hoops, mm -hmm. And I have a lot of clarity and um, like hoop epiphanies with tricks and, and sequences and stuff when I'm out in nature. Yeah. And I have more clarity. Do you think too that part of that is because you're not, you're not looking at your phone and you're not watching a video of someone oh, yeah. do a hard trick and then you're like, okay, I'm going to repeat that trick. I'm going to like try and Absolutely. figure it out. Absolutely. You know, you're disconnected You unplug from, that. from technology. Yeah. You know, when I'm out hiking, most of the places I go don't have cell phone reception. So I'm not inclined to constantly be, you know, scrolling through Instagram to get inspiration. I just feel it. Yeah. You know? Oh, wow. And trees. Yeah. And trees yeah. and the ground and, and natural elements of the earth. The light. The yes. light is what always gets me. Oh, the sunlight. Yeah. Yes. They, those things naturally um, have lower vibrations. Mm -hmm. And lower vibrations really help to ground you and center you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you're trying to seek out the flow state, you're way up here. Mm -hmm. And you're trying so much to like push yourself into it. It's it's more of falling into it. Yeah. You know? It, yeah. It should yeah. gently catch you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like yeah. a cloud. It should be I mean I think flow is flow should be like a less cognitive state when you're doing any other kind of work for example i do a lot of video editing mm -hmm. so when i'm doing video editing the flow state for video editing is when my ability and my skills are matching my creativity and i'm and at the same time i'm i'm discovering something new mm -hmm. that for me is is a flow state when i'm working on like a computer project for example there's a lot of thinking and there's a lot of background work, there's a lot of practice that goes into achieving a flow state. And I think that some people think that you should just do a flow state and you can get there, but I think it takes practice to cultivate it a does. flow state. It absolutely does. Yeah, it and doesn't like just happen. And like you've mentioned, muscle memory mm -hmm. is definitely part of it. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways you can enter a flow state, mm -hmm. but it, it started within my secret circle, within yeah. my hula hoop. And for me, that goes hand in hand with meditation, um, using affirmations, mm -hmm. using mantras. Yeah. You use mantras. I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so before I go on stage, um, you know, ideally when I'm on stage, I am laser focused. The audience is with me. I'm taking them on this journey. Mm -hmm. They're really like, you know, going through this whole process with me while I'm doing these very difficult tricks. And I have to, in order to be in the present moment, which is a flow state on stage, you mm -hmm. know, but it's a choreograph, everything's choreographed, but it's a flow state. Mm -hmm. I say to myself, okay, Hannah, listen, your job right now is to move slowly and have fun mm -hmm. and show that to the audience. And that's mm -hmm. all I really focus on because I know my act, I know the music, I know ev all the elements I know, mm -hmm. but when I get nervous, I tend to move too quickly. So I always have to focus on slowing my act down hmm. so that I'm not, yeah. yeah, I'm not speeding through it. And then having fun because mm. cause this is fun and that's why I'm doing it. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When I talk about meditation and mantras and affirmations, I mean, they're all in the same family. Affirmation, emotional support or encouragement stating that something is true. When I'm about to teach a class and I'm nervous, I would say... 
I am a very skilled hoop dancer and I am going to rock this class. And that for me would be an affirmation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can use affirmations throughout your day. They're statements that you say like in their truth. Yeah. And they don't need to feel true no. for you to say them. In no, fact, they I don't. Most of the time they don't feel true. Yes. And that's yeah. the whole that's the whole purpose yeah. of using them. Is because your words are so powerful. Yeah. I don't think that that's understood enough. The power of your words. When you say I'm so anxious, like I'm so scared to perform. That thought is going to stick with you. Mm -hmm. um, our inner voice is not our identity. And the more that you say it, the more that you believe it. Mm -hmm. Just becoming conscious of them. Yeah. Because it's so common for people to be hooping and be telling themselves, oh, I'm never going to get this. But you write your own story. You do. You, you know? write your own story. And when you tell yourself that, your mind is going to believe it. Yeah. The way that you talk to yourself should be as if you're talking to your best friend. Yeah. Whatever you say to yourself, yeah. ask yourself, would I say this to my best friend? Yeah. Would I say like, these words yeah. aloud to someone I love and care about? When you're about to go on stage and perform, I'm not no. going to say to you, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if you're going to be able to pull off that, yeah. that new trick. Yeah. Like you, like, I don't know yeah. if you're going to be able to like keep the audience's attention. Yeah. Like, I would never say that yeah. to you. The I internal would say thoughts, something yeah. uplifting. Yeah. You learn to disengage from your thoughts and you learn to to gain power over the way that you talk to yourself. Yeah. And that's just so important. It is. It's it is. true. And it's like, I didn't understand this for a really long time. And mm -hmm. it's still a learning process. It like, is. It's a constant learning you process. You have to engage with this always, every yes. single You day. have to be conscious of it. Yeah. And I catch myself almost every day yeah. falling into that negative mentality trap when you become aware of it, sometimes you'll want to fight it and think, but it is true. I really can't do this. Yeah. And it's a habit that you have to practice. Yeah. You have to say it to yourself even if you don't believe it. Yeah, you have, and yeah, you don't have to believe it, but you need to say it to yourself. Yeah. Because you, you there's, there's actually literally scientific evidence that on the like molecular level, our thoughts create physical matter. They do. Yeah, and so and so we sound so woo woo -y right now, but this is I swear this is true. Oh yeah. Um, read, oh yeah, I've done my research with it. Yeah, yeah, breaking the habit of being yourself was the book that really like like mm. taught me this. But you have to if if you visualize it, if you see it, and if you say it to yourself, it will become true. Maybe not the next day or mm -hmm. the day after, but your practice in in positive self talk and and being kind to yourself will grow into something that not only you eventually believe but you see unfolding around you and all the goodness that 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 is happening to mm -hmm. you yeah. yeah absolutely and within these practices of self-awareness consciously being present and mantras and affirmations and meditations all of that creates more positive thinking more clarity which can be brought into your practice yeah when you're more in a positive mindset and you're practicing it's gonna give you more stanima to keep getting back up mm -hmm. sometimes I just have to take a step outside of myself and say Michelle <laughs> take a few minutes sit down get grounded take some deep breaths yeah um, take a short five-minute meditation I lead a lot of my hoop classes with meditations because it's just as important to warm up your mind and fall into a, um, a good positive mindset as it is to warm up your body. It is. Yeah. yeah. I honestly used to believe that, that the way you improved, the way that anybody got better was that you were self-critical because I thought that being self-critical was was being honest with yourself. And mm -hmm. I thought that honesty was, was so important. I thought it was important how you that you look at yourself objectively and you see where all your flaws are and you think about all your flaws mm -hmm. and you fixate on them. And, and actually it's totally the opposite, but it took me years to understand that self-improvement, self-growth happens from a positive mindset. It comes yeah. from a place of being like, 
dude, I am a bomb hula hooper. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I have so many things that I can do really well. I can't do everything with hula hooping, but mm-hmm. that doesn't matter. Like, mm-hmm. because it's an ongoing learning you process you. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? And these tools, um, they enhance your clarity. And when your clarity is enhanced, your mind body connection is deepened. And when your mind body connection is deepened, you can reach your full potential much more easily and authentically. And that, yeah. that portrays into your flow and it's, it's transparent to other people, mm-hmm. you know, your audience yeah. can pick up on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So be positive, be positive, be happy. You got, got this. this. You are worthy yes. and you're, you're doing it. So do your day. Get to know your inner voice and make it your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. For sure. You're one of my best friends. You're one of my best friends. Yay. Cheers to that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe Thank to our you. YouTube channel. Give well, my YouTube channel and her YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a thumbs up. All right. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Welcome back to our fireside flow, wait, no, wait, <laughs> fireside flow and grow, to our flow and grow fireside Side chats. chats, flow and grow fireside chats, okay, yeah, right.